I'm Mr. Johnson, and this is Mr. and Rufty. You're here at the A Center at Highland Springs with Computer Systems Technology. Uh, today, we'll be talking about installing Windows. All right, so we're going to go ahead and switch to our other input. All right, so we're going to do this using virtual machines today. So obviously, um, you know, you would be able to do this using your regular PC computers also. Uh, but this is a really easy way to teach this in class for you uh, to be able to do it over and over again and keep getting practice. Um, so we're going to use Oracle VirtualBox right here to create a VM or a virtual machine. And so once we get into the Oracle software, which is free, uh, we talk about like shareware, freeware, and uh, all those different types of software. So this one is free to the public. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click New. And then once we get in here, we would have to name our virtual machine. So we're going to name our virtual machine. We're just going to name it uh, CST uh, test today. And you can name it whatever you really want it. Most of the time we'll have you uh, name it like your first initial last name and the date that you're doing it um, so that we can kind of keep track of how many times you've done it and um, your proficiency level. So once we do that, we're going to have to pick what type of version or what, uh, what version of Windows that we're going to use. So we're going to go ahead and find Windows 10 64-bit. That's what we're going to be installing today. So this computer always, already has um, all of the uh, OSIs for the different types of Windows on it. So we didn't really have to do anything to load it on here because we've already done that. Um, but if you were doing this on your own, you would have to... Uh, purchase a copy, download it to a flash drive, and then make that flash drive bootable. Uh, but we've already done all of those things. Um, so right here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep configuring my virtual machine. And the memory size right here, they tell you not to use more than half of the RAM that you actually have in your computer for your virtual machine. Because your actual computer that you're installing this virtual machine on is, it has its own hardware, but then you're virtually using part of that hardware to create this other computer onto that computer. So you have your host computer and then you have your virtual computer, which is what we're doing here. So the changes made to this virtual computer don't really make any major changes to our actual host computer. So if we mess something up in here, it's still gonna be fine after we're done. All right, so I'm just gonna go with the base because I know that'll work for what we're trying to do. It's just two gigs, but if I wanted to, I could slide this slider over and add more RAM, add like four gigs. So I'll just stop there, or you could use the slider here, um, or you could just type in a different number uh, if you knew exactly how much you wanted to use there. Um, so for the hard disk that's gonna be in the computer, um, you could not create a virtual hard disk and then it would install all of the files onto your actual computer that you're using. Um, or you could have all those files, it's gonna still be on the computer but they'll be stored in one main location, um, a virtual hard disk so to speak, um, and that's what we like to do so we can keep it all neat and clean. So we're gonna go ahead and cre uh, click create. Um, and then once we get here, this is gonna be our virtual hard disk that we're creating. I'm gonna leave it where it's recommended, which is 32 gigs. Um, and then you look over here, there's a couple options for the type of virtual hard disk that you're gonna create. Um, VDI, um, that's for using uh, the virtual uh, disk image for VirtualBox specifically. Uh, VHD uh, will work on multiple platforms. So that's the one that we're actually gonna use. And then you could have a fixed size or dynamically allocated. Dynamic means it changes. Fixed, it's gonna be whatever that size is um, regardless. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it be dynamic. And then I click create. So now our virtual machine or our virtual computer has been created. That's up here, CST test. So the next thing we gotta do actually is we're gonna have to go ahead and figure out what type of media it's gonna to use to install Windows. So if we had a USB drive, we'd have to make sure that USB drive is plugged in at this time. Um, we actually have OSIs already on this computer, like I said before, so we can just find those files. Um, so we just go through settings again, and then we're gonna to go to storage. 
we can check all this stuff and make sure it's correct. Um, if I was like going around trying to help you, that's what I would be doing. I would go back and I would look through these settings to make sure that you set it up properly. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click storage. So you can see that your CD or your disk drive uh, is empty. So we're gonna load something in there. The way we do that is we're just gonna click on it and when it highlights, it's gonna give you some options over here. SATA port one, that's fine. And then we click on the little disk over to the corner. And if I didn't know where the file was located at or I hadn't already done this on this computer, I would have to choose the, uh, the virtual optical disk file and I would go look through the computer like I was browsing for a file and I would have to find it that way. But because I've done this on this computer before already, all I have to do is click this because it kind of remembers where it's at. Then I'm just go ahead and click OK. And now if I look on this main screen, it tells me what's loaded into that optical disk drive, Windows 10. All right, so now the next thing I got to do or I have to do is uh, go ahead and start the virtual machine. So I click start and this is actually just booting the computer up. So imagine like if you were actually sitting at a computer and you press the power button, that's what that would be equivalent to. So it actually finds that uh, OSI, I mean, ISO file. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and obviously I'm gonna choose English, but if you were needing to do it in a different language, you would choose the languages here. Uh, I'm not gonna do that because I don't know any other languages. <laughs> All right, so I click next. And then right here, if I was doing a repair, on a regular computer, I could click repair and this could take me to uh, where I could do some troubleshooting. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and click install because that's what we're doing. So setup starts. So you would put your product key here and everybody uh, remembers what your product key is, correct? Um, does everybody remember how to get a product key? Purchase Windows. So, um, it would come with the, the actual install. So if I was gonna go on to the Microsoft website and purchase it that way, then this product key would come as part of my um, purchase if I was purchasing, purchasing it digitally. Um, if I was gonna actually buy the disc from like Office Max um, or one of those stores that you could go in and buy it, um, the product key is normally printed on a little sheet of paper or a slip of paper or on the back of the disc. Um, I'm just going to click I don't have a product key and the reason being is we are, you know, we have access to product keys, but I don't want to waste them doing these tests. So I just click I don't uh, have a product key. Does anybody know how long you can use Windows without putting the product key in? Raise your hand if you know the answer. Anybody want to guess? Huh? And definitely... You could use it indefinitely, but it wouldn't have all the features enabled. Um, that is correct. But the answer that I'm actually looking for is 30 days. They'll give you 30 days to get that input. All right. So we're going to go ahead and install Windows 10 Pro. Um, Pro has a couple more features than Home. Go ahead. So after 30 days, does it just say like activate Windows on the side? Normally what it does is it, it'll, the background will turn black and it'll say um, Windows, is no Windows is no longer active or it'll say not genuine, um, depending on the version of Windows that you have. Normally I've seen the not genuine a lot. But can you still use it? Yeah, you can, that's what I was saying. You can still use it, but some of the features won't work. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and install Windows 10 Pro. Click Next. And then this is their end user license agreement. Um, and I know we all love these, but you should actually go down and sit down and read some of this stuff, um, you know, if you have some time. So we're gonna go ahead and accept it because I've already uh, went through that before. And then right here, if I was doing an upgrade, so if I was upgrading an older version of Windows to this new version, um, that I'm using here or more current version because we all, all know that Windows 11 is out uh, But we're not installing Windows 11. We're installing Windows 10 uh, We're gonna do a custom install because this computer or virtual machine has never had Windows on it So we're gonna go ahead and click custom 
And right here, this tells us about the hard drive information. Um, the amount of unallocated space is the space that we have not formatted yet. Um, through this process, it will format. So I could just click next and it'll do it for me. Um, let's say I wanted to, if I had a two terabyte hard drive and I only wanted to use one terabyte, what I would do is I might click new and then I could, I could pick the size I wanted the hard drive to be versus doing this um, and just allowing it use the whole hard drive. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click, up, uh, I was gonna click apply, but you would type the number in and then you would just click apply and you just hit okay. And then that creates the partitions for you. Um, and you could form, and when you format, everybody remembers that that's gonna erase all of your data uh, when you do the format process. Um, so I can just go ahead and click next because none of this has been done on this before. And then it just starts the installation process. On a regular computer, it might take you, you know, 25 to 30 minutes to do this install process. On the virtual machine, it's actually a lot faster and it's normally in the 10 to 15 minute range. So that's basically what we have um, for installing Windows. It's not a, like a real complicated process. Um, you just have to kind of know some of the major details about the system and how you want it set up. Uh, configuration wise, um, but we could continue doing this over and over again on this computer uh, until we run out of space on the hard drive. Um, and then we could also delete these as we're doing them. So that's why I'm saying we're going to use this as a method to practice because it really doesn't waste any supplies really. Okay. okay. All right. Does everybody get it? Any questions? Does it, um, why does it matter? I mean, why is it faster through a virtual machine? Because everything is virtual, it's like not really having to read anything. So normally you're using like a USB drive. So it's got to read and it's only going to be as fast as that USB drive is. And the pathway from the port to the hard drive and the CPU and all of those things. Right now, all of this is just happening virtually on the computer. So it's able to happen really fast. Okay. Any other questions? So once again, you're here with Computer Systems Technology uh, at the A Center at Highland Springs, and today we covered how to install Windows on a virtual machine.